thanks everybody for joining. You could also ask Microsoft anything. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Um, this session will be about uh, monitoring with PowerShell and SCOM. And I'm doing this session because I was really, well, having a few problems with how SCOM worked and how hard it was to add monitoring there. So l let's see how we, uh, what, what we want to solve here and how we get there. So uh, if you were at my session yesterday, I have pretty simple agendas. We go with why I show you how and then we have a summary at the end and I probably won't take too long since everybody is probably tired and wants to go home. At least I am. <laughs> okay, so first problem. If you uh, are a SCOM administrator, who's using SCOM? Everybody, almost everybody, okay. If you're a SCOM administrator, then you know it can be quite a daunting task to figure out what kind of monitoring is actually currently running on my system. Who has added what in which management pack? And, and here I show a few screenshots of where you might want to look, but I left the summary view out. I, well, didn't go into Override Explorer, which most of you might be using if you want to get some actual insight in what monitoring is actually deployed. So it's really crappy to see, okay, this is actually the monitoring that's now running on your system. So something I want to change. Because when I look at the configuration for one of my servers, I really want to see, okay, this is the monitoring that is deployed to this box. If I have an application that was deployed, I probably also want to monitor it unless I deployed it for no good reason. But in usually in production scenarios, I want to have it monitored. So I want to describe my monitoring as well. So that's the first problem I, I would like to tackle. Then we have a second problem. The second problem is this. This is the active alerts pane in, uh, in SCOM. And this is a story about an administrator. He's called Chris works at a quite a large company and he has this business critical, uh, critical application. So Chris did some research and for Windows monitoring framework or uh, applications and convinced his boss some time ago to actually buy the system center licenses needed for this. Okay, so got our approval went through all the trouble actually setting up monitoring for his custom application. And um, now this happened. So, so what happened? Now, let me tell you. So Chris was asked to schedule a change for his super important application. And he did that. So, and well, as his application cannot be upgraded during the day, he has an automated job to schedule it overnight. So Chris sets up all the, uh, the change and well, it's an automated system. He goes home, next day he comes in, checks his alert pane, all clear. So you think, well, all fine. I'm free to go to the coffee machine now. It should be safe. On his way to the coffee machine though, gets attacked by a few colleagues anyway. What the hell, my application is not running. So what happened here? What SCOM does by default is when you have a discovery, then when the application is no longer there, it will undiscover it. Which in this case, well, the uninstall of the application went fine, but the upgrade didn't happen. And SCOM thought, okay, hey, you uninstalled the application. No need to monitor it, right? So that's another thing that I really wanted to have fixed in, in a different setup. The last item is, uh, is this one. I picked it from user voice. And I think this is also making clear again that SCOM administrators want PowerShell support in SCOM. This uh, request is for a GUI approach. I think any approach is better than what the SCOM console delivers. If you have looked at the authoring, um, well, experience, 
if I can say it like that, that you get in the SCOM console, even Notepad has a better authoring experience since that supports search and replace. The SCOM one doesn't. So that's another reason why I thought, okay, we have to go with something better here. So how do we want that? What, what I would like to see is, is a loop like this. So I describe my intent of what I want to deploy. Then I deploy it to the node. Then I start to monitor it. And then based on that data, I will improve it again. And then the cycle continues. And as you can see, there is really a one-to-one -one relationship be between what I describe and what I want to monitor in the end. So if I describe deploy application X, I also want to monitor application X afterwards. Obviously in Windows we have a framework for that called DSC. So that's also what I will be using here. But the, money for, uh, the framework I've built for this can also be used without DSC. So the way I solved it was basically a monitor framework that is able to discover what I want to monitor. So I store my scripts in a separate file and I discover which scripts are in that file and I execute them with SCOM. And that file, that is a PSD1 file and that contains everything I want to monitor on that node. And that gets executed by SCOM. And DSC is just used as a delivery mechanism for all that monitoring. And again, you can also create this PSD1 file by hand or use the functions I wrote for it. So, how does that look? I said, on the laptop, we have the, in my case, the DSC pool server. We pull the configuration with the local configuration manager from the pool server, and there is described what I want to monitor. The LCM creates the PSD1 file, and in the PSD1 file is then all the PowerShell monitoring that currently supports both services and PowerShell monitors. And there's all the monitoring that gets executed. On the right, we have the SCOM management server. And there we have a special management pack I've created for this installed that is able to do the discovery of all the monitors in the PSD1 file. We then create objects out of that instances and we execute our monitoring scripts against all the targets. So basically I have a wrapper built in the management pack that is executing the scripts in the PSD1 file. So let's have a look how that works. So, um, to start with, I can create a PSD1 file. Um, these are all functions I created to actually uh, write those PSD1s. And let's open that in the ISE. And this is really the super basic implementation of that PSD1 file. So, this contains no monitoring, just plain we support services, in this case, and we support PowerShell scripts to be executed. So if we add actually some monitoring to that um, file, we can execute that. And here I say, okay, I want to monitor the service bits. I have an alert owner, which is a property I usually miss in SCOM. So this is just to route it to the correct team. Um, I monitor the CPU and I monitor the memory. So if we execute that and add it to the file, we can look at the file again and we see that our bit service is now added to the file. And we can do the same obviously for a PowerShell monitor, but there you also need to write a script. So, how should that script look? 
So what I'm expecting in the management pack is, well, you, you can create it, uh, give it any name, um, assign it to a team if you like, um, specify how often it should run. So this is every 15 minutes. And next, you need to specify the script. Well, I created a demo script that makes absolutely no sense, but the important part here is that we do get an, an object back. And in that object, I expect a result, which is an integer, um, the alert level, so if it's healthy, warning, or in critical state, and a description, which if this flips to a warning or a critical state, what would you like to see in your alert description? Because this is directly used in Scrum to create a property back, which is sent to the management server. So if you run that, we can also see that if we run it with what if, what will happen? So in this case, it, we will add it to my custom uh, PowerShell monitor. I can also use it with report only, and that's what I do in a DSC context, that I actually can see, okay, well, this monitor is not there yet, so we have to add it. In this case, let's just update the file. If we would look at the file now, we will actually see that the PowerShell monitor got added to the file as well. Here we have, well, we can of course now change the script as well. And on, we set the interval seconds to, well, half an hour instead of 50 minutes. I can again do report only and see, ah, my custom PowerShell monitor, the interval seconds property changed and we changed it from 900 to 1800. And again, that's, well, quite useful if you're in a DSC scenario where we have to test and set so how do these functions work? First of all, there is the new PSCOM monitor framework file, and there's uh, the function that will actually write the file to disk. And that's just a matter of, well, it accepts um, either a PowerShell or a service object at the moment. What we will do with those, we will check um, make this a little bit, a little bit bigger. We will check, are all the properties that I expect on the object, are they ev actually available on the object? And we do that again here for the, the PowerShell monitor. And next, it's just, well, with the string builder, I create one large string to actually get this all going. Um, the reason I do this is there is no export PowerShell data file yet. Um, I did notice there was an, a request on GitHub to create that. It's not created yet, but well, when we have this in the future, we should also be able to use the in, build in one. Okay, then if we have a look at how the management pack works, because this is the one side, we've now seen, okay, this is how the PSD1 file um, gets created. Um, let me go back, by the way, to also show you how it gets updated. That's another important part. So basically the new just generates one large string that is added to the file. And the update script gets one uh, single object and checks is this object that I now got, is that available in the file already? Should I add it? Was there something changed? Uh, so we can update it or remove it from the file. And with an update action, we can either add it or update it when it already exists. So if we look at how that works. Basically, I import a PowerShell data file from disk. We create all the services that we found in the PSD1. We compare that to the current data and 
if there are any changes at the end, we will write it. Uh, we will call the new uh, PSCOM monitor framework file with everything that we found and what has changed, and that's written to disk. So that's for the PSD1 file. Let's now have a look at the management pack I've built for that. Let's make it a bit bigger. Who is uh, authoring SCOM management packs? Okay, so some people will already know a bit about, about how this works. But in basically, in SCOM you have the same as you have in PowerShell. We have classes. And on the class, we have just defined which properties do I want to have available on that class. So that's both for the PowerShell object and for the service object. Next instance of a class gets discovered by SCOM. So we have discoveries. And we have a discovery both for the PowerShell object and for the service discovery object. I don't know if that's really readable, but I can always zoom in. So we have the PowerShell object and the, disc and the service object. And as you can see, I also have discovery for the CPU monitoring of the service and the memory monitoring of the service. Since if you didn't specify a memory threshold or a CPU threshold, I don't have to monitor it. So in that case, I don't want anything monitored. So what this discovery does is actually discovers all the objects that have a max memory or max CPU higher than zero, and then adds it to the group that I've created for the monitor. And the actual CPU monitor is then set with an override on that group. So when it is higher than zero, it does get enabled. So once we have the class and the discovery, we obviously need to target the monitor at that because the monitors are really targeted at the class and then instances of that class get the monitor. So if we look at that, for the PowerShell monitor, for example, we will see that this PowerShell monitor is using a Uh, data source, and the data source is again basically a combination of a scheduler. So this data source defines how often should something run and what should I run. The what is over here, so that's my monitor PowerShell, and that's the PowerShell script I mentioned before. That's actually the wrapper around the script that you've created in the PSD1 file. So we have a look at that. And this is the PowerShell script that gets executed when we have a monitor that we want to run. So it, uh, the input is the name of the monitor and the file path to the PSD1 file where it can find this monitor. What happens next is, well, we import the PowerShell data file, we get the monitor that we need. If we didn't get it for some reason, it might happen because it got deleted and the discovery in SCOM didn't run yet. But if we do get it, we execute the script and we check all the data uh, output, if that's indeed what we expect it to be. If it isn't, I will convert it for you a string or either as a, or as integer in case of the result. And then we create a property back which makes sure that all this information is also sent to SCOM. Okay, that was a lot of preparation. Let's see how that actually shows in SCOM. So I have a DC configuration created with a few monitors in there. And we see that we have 
a, monitor, a service monitor for bits. I have a script that monitors handles for a process, and the DNS database node memory is monitored. If we look at SCOM, we will already see, indeed, this is the bit service that has stopped. I also notify you uh, that this is actually a service that is monitored by the monitoring framework, so you know that this is defined in that PSD1 file. And we also see the process handle count script here. And that also gives an alert at the moment. You can also check the view for that. And if I refresh here, yeah. we need to see I have a process handle count monitor and DNS database node memory monitor that are actually executing the scripts that are in the PSD1 file. Any questions this far? Am I so clear or is it just really late? Hmm? Not clear? Oh, okay, okay. Well, that's good. Let's see. We go back to the demo. The nice thing is, um, basically when I'm monitoring, I think in 90% of the cases, I have, I want to check one or two, uh, two things. The one is availability. So is something running? And the second one is performance. So have, is it running within the limits I expect? So what I do with the result in the script, that is actually in SCOM converted to performance data. So when we look at this um, DNS database uh, node memory monitor, you will see in the script that I have this uh, result as the database node memory, and that's queried here. In SCOM, I also have a, I have a performance view for that, so we can actually see the DNS node database memory over the last period. So this is all what you get for free just by, well, having the right counter in there. You will maybe ask yourself, okay, so what about an availability monitor? Is that really still useful then? What I thought about that is just when we put in a zero or a one, then you already know, okay, that's the time my problem started and that's when it stopped. So it can be pretty useful in that case as well. Definitely when you look at the reporting side, because if you, in SCOM, if you do a report on an alert, it's pretty hard to figure out when it opened and when it closed. If you do it in the performance view, you just get a graph and you know if it's zero, it was okay. And if it's one, it wasn't okay. So that's what I have here as well. In this case, this was, always an issue apparently. So the only thing I have there is one. But if this will become correct, it will go to zero. So let's add some monitoring and see how easy that is. We have this not existing service I will add first. Because, as we know, one of the things I would like to solve is that it's not just a SCOM discovery, it's really, if I define something that has to be monitored, it should be monitored, no matter what. So in this case, I will monitor the service does not exist, which obviously does not exist, and we should get an alert on that. So let's execute that. And that will be added to this SCOM monitor data file which is picked up by SCOM. We see that the DC resource now executed. In this case, I'm using the DC resource to update the file. Well, indeed, it wasn't in desired state, does not exist, and we're adding it to the file. 
we can do the same for the PowerShell monitor. I will add a PowerShell monitor in this case, which monitors the Active Directory web services sessions. Um, add that to the file. And let's restart the health service just for Scum to be able to also execute the discovery because otherwise we will sit here for a day waiting, which, well, we probably don't want to do. So, in a demo, this is kind of a problem since Scum is a bit, a little bit slow here. It has to execute this, this discovery now. So it will be there in about three or four minutes. So let's move on to the next demo and come back to this one later. Because what I also can do is uh, update it, of course. And if we look at uh, the process handle count, we knew, okay, we know that one is already in there. And when we look at the alert message for that one, It tells me, okay, we are above the threshold of 5,000. 5,000 what? Okay, let's fix that. So here I have a new version of the script and I'm actually telling in the alert description we talk about handles here. So if we are now update this, the MOF or the PSD1 gets changed now. When I go back to SCOM, we can do a recalculate health for this one. Let's first reset it because otherwise I won't get a new alert. So the alert with the faulty message now has disappeared. Ah, and my does not exist service did appear. So that was discovered. Let's go back to my monitor. And we do a recalculate health, which is also implemented in this case. Um, if you're familiar with score management packs, you will often notice that management pack authors just don't care about the recalculate health and that the button, button, well, you get this circle going, but the reality, nothing happens in the background. And that's because the author decided not to include on-demand detection in the management pack. Um, in this case, we did enable that. We see in, it flipped to warning state again. And if we now check the alert that was created, if we refresh this, we see that we now have the correct alert message. That's quite a bit easier than going to SCOM, having to start your altering console and updating your monitors, if you ask me. And you also get a native altering experience in the ISE or Visual Studio Code as we are, as we have to use apparently with our Look at the last few days. So obviously, we also remove uh, support removing of the service. So we've seen okay that bit service that well, I don't really care about it anymore. So I set it to absent in this case, and then when we execute this. We will see, okay, indeed, we weren't in desired state and we will remove it. So let's restart the health service again. So it will actually get undiscovered in this case. And now I do want the undiscovery to happen since now I actually told Scrum, okay, I don't want to monitor this anymore. Remove this from my file, I'm fine with it. Go ahead. Going back to the previous demos, we already noticed that 
our non-existent service is popping up now. So here we have gotten an alert that the service does not exist, has stopped running. Obviously, in this case, the monitor just couldn't find it on the system, but it shows a nice alert anyway. The partial monitor should also have been created in the meantime. And indeed, my Active Directory web session monitor is now available. And we also see here that the properties that I discovered are also are set in the, in the DC configuration are available on this object. And again, also here we do the results checking of the monitor for how many sessions there were. The services are just in the Windows service state. So let's refresh here and see if our bit service already disappeared. It didn't do that yet, but that's because the discovery just takes some time to also undiscover it. So let's go to the next demo. As we noticed, um, my process uh, handle count monitor was giving a warning all the time now. It's also something that I obviously can update now, since in this case I know that, well, we, we also noticed that in the alert, DNS.exe was giving a high handle count alert. Obviously for this, in this case, that's just expected behavior. So I want to exclude it from this monitor. So I've added it to the exclude processes. And with this demo, I will update the script and then show you that when we do a recalculate health in SCON, the alert also immediately disappears. So we update the file again. PC1 file is written. When we go back to SCON, go to the active alerts and then let's to recalculate health on the monitor that was unhealthy before, or we now do that. The demo dots are with me. We should see that indeed the issue is resolved now. And we can also see uh, no process found above the handle threshold of 5,000. And that's how easy it is with this to actually also change your monitoring script. Let's see if we can sort of actually remove the bit service already. Now we did it. Well, I will not wait for that. Let's go back to the presentation. So, what did we see? With this monitor framework, it's pretty easy to get your custom monitoring into SCOM the way you want it. If we have a look at the issues I wanted to solve in the beginning, we now have the ability to actually monitor stuff even if it's not there. SCOM will not undiscover stuff if we don't want it to. It will always, we, we're pretty sure that it will execute the monitoring we want. We now have a better authoring experience since we can just write our PowerShell scripts in a way that is actually meant for PowerShell to do it. And, well, with uh, Chris, you still got his job, so don't worry about it. Let's see, okay, um, some useful resources. I will uh, upload the management pack and all the the, the going module after this session to my GitHub. If you want to get involved into actually writing management packs yourself, or you want to change the management pack I've created, um, this is the best course on the internet on how to author SCOM management packs. It's a session on 
uh, from Brian Wen. Um, he's like the god on SCOM authoring. So if you want to get more insight in how SCOM works in the backend, that's where you can check it. Then, are there any more questions? In that case, uh, I'm done. So, and everything's there.